two people who are very good, dedicated people, Zacharias and his wife, Elizabeth. And we're reading in Luke chapter 1 and verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren. And they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass, while he uh, executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing in the right side, on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias. For thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, that's the Lord Jesus. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak uh, unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass, as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. In the passage we have before us, we have a wonderful, wonderful account of uh, people who really walked with God. You notice the things it said about uh, this man, Zacharias, that uh, he was a man who was righteous. And it speaks that of his wife. They were righteous people. That is, these were people who recognized that they were sinners and had offered the sacrifices. This was done before the days of the sacrifice of Christ. And they offered the sacrifices and confessed their sins and had had given a testimony of their faith in God that God kept his word. And that God gave a testimony to them that they were righteous in his sight. And not only so, the Bible says that they were obedient. Now that's a wonderful thing because, you know, righteousness must be followed up by obedience and that's what he teaches us that we need to obey the lord whatever the lord says we need to be obedient to it when we see it in the scriptures we obey what the word of god teaches Uh, and the bible also uses another word to describe them they were blameless now boy that is a high standard and uh, the lord has given these people to us as kind of an example to follow their steps and They were so pure in their lives that nobody could point a finger and accuse them of anything. They were blameless, blameless before God and before others. What a way to live. And these people walked with God. But not only were they righteous, and not only were they innocent and obedient, 
And not only were they blameless, they were also childless. And not only childless, now they were hopeless. Because the time had come now, then twice he says in the passage that we read before you today, twice he said, it's beyond our time. We're well stricken in years, and uh, we're past the age of ever having any children. You know, it must have been that when they got married years before this time, that they were excited about being married and raising a family and having children and, and uh, all of that. And they must have then, when time went by and they didn't have children, they must have been praying earnestly because he said the Lord heard their prayer. They were seeking the Lord about these things. That's another good thing for us to follow. Uh, whatever it is that troubles us, we need to bring it to the Lord. And we need to cast our cares on the Lord for he cares for us. And the scripture tells us not to be full of care about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving we're to make our request to God. And the peace of God that passes understanding shall keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. But you see something here that is very important and something that we ought to emulate in our lives and we ought to be careful about. And, and number one, that's this. Even though they didn't get their prayer answered, they kept serving the Lord. Here they are now, older people, well past the years of having their children. And still, even though God didn't answer that prayer, which was a major prayer to them, that they would have child, children, and especially uh, the, the women wanted to have a, a male child so they could keep up the family name, uh, yet, even though God hadn't answered that prayer, they kept serving the Lord. They were going to serve him in season and out of season. They were going to serve him no matter what. And they had determined in their hearts that they were going to walk with God in spite of the circumstances. I find out something else about them. And, and that is this. They refused to get bitter when things didn't go their way. Throughout all these years that I've preached the Word of God, I've counted way too many people who at one time served the Lord. One time were in church and faithful and walked with God. And then something happened. Something happened while well, it was a death in the family, a death of a child, a death of a mate, a financial reverse, sickness, or some people turned away from them or mistreated them. And then they just quit. Now you couldn't get them in church with a court order. I mean, it's just a sad, sad thing. What happens to people? God is still good. God is the same. God hasn't changed. And if they were worshiping him, they ought to keep worshiping him. Zacharias and Elizabeth, they couldn't have any children, but they said that was their heart's desire, and they prayed for it and prayed for it, and yet they kept serving when they didn't get the answer they wanted. It seemed like heaven was uh, brass to them and they, their prayer was unheard and yet they kept serving. And this is the heart that we ought to have. You see, the problem here is when people have a bad thing that happened to them, then they blame God for it. And when they really ought to be blaming the devil and all of his enemies for that bad thing. You understand that, don't you? When, when God created man, he put him in the garden and gave him a beautiful wife, and uh, they had everything you could ever ask for in this world in the Garden of Eden. God provided all the food and all of the wonderful things and safety and protection and the availability of the tree of life so they could live forever there. God wanted them to have the best. And by the way, he promises that in the future for us. There's going to be a time when we live in the new Jerusalem in heaven, and there there'll be no sickness or sorrow, pain or death. The former things will be passed away. But understand, sin entered into the world, and death by sin 
And so death passes upon all men, for they all have sinned. And so sickness and death and sorrow and brokenheartedness and all of the bad things that could ever happen to any of us happen because of sin in this world. Satan uses those things against us. And just because you are a righteous person, just because you've received Christ as your Savior, you're born again, you're on the way to glory, doesn't exempt you from the fact that sin is going to have its effect and you are going to die. The wages of sin is death. And it's going to come to all of us unless the Lord takes us out of here sooner. And may that happen for all of us to see the Lord. But understand this, just because you receive Christ as your Savior doesn't exempt you from dying. It doesn't exempt you from sickness. It doesn't exempt you from heartbreak, from losing loved ones and all of those kinds of things that could happen to us and people turning against us and all those kind of evil things that happen. It can happen to anybody saved or lost. And when something bad happens, we must be like Zechariah. We must be like Elizabeth. We must say, I'm going to serve God no matter what the circumstances. Do you understand how important this is? Satan will use anything he can to keep you from being faithful to God and serving the Lord. He'll bring anything into your life and he'll misinterpret it and keep on misinterpreting it. And if you'll listen to the devil, you'll blame God for your problems instead of blaming the devil and sin for your problems. In all your problems, God has given his promise to be with you in the midst of them. And he said you can cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain thee. And you have the promise of God. He will never leave you or forsake you. That he's going to take care of you. You may have difficulty, you may have problems, but he's there in the midst of them. You remember the story, don't you? What happened to the great apostle Paul, the greatest apostle who ever lived, the greatest book writer who wrote 13 books in our marvelous, wonderful word of God? The apostle Paul came down with some kind of sickness. No one is really 100% sure, and the Lord doesn't let us know for sure because he wants you to know you can apply it to every sickness. And so he says, though, that he had a thorn, T-H-O-R-N, a thorn in the flesh. Something was afflicting him physically. The greatest Christian, the greatest apostle who ever lived, yes, Though he had healed others, yes. He had raised some from the dead, yes. But now he's sick. He's got a thorn in the flesh. And so he prays and no answer. And he spends another season of prayer, no answer. And another season of prayer. Thrice he said, I sought the Lord about this thing. And he said, the Lord said, Paul, I'm not going to take away that thorn in the flesh, but I'm going to give you grace to bear it. My grace, he said, is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. Most gladly, therefore, he said, will I glory in my infirmities, for when I am weak, then am I strong, because I have the strength of God, the blessings of God. Do you see the example given there? the greatest Christian who ever lived, and yet God allowed him to have this thorn in the flesh. He wasn't exempt. And the Lord said, though, I'm going to give you grace to bear whatever that is, whatever that problem is, whatever happens to you, whatever comes your way, whatever difficulty, whatever reversing that ever comes in you and around you, God is going to be there in the midst of that. God is going to take care of you. And he's not going to watch over you. And our Lord Jesus said he would never leave us. And he'll give us strength to bear whatever problem there is. This story is given. I, I think it's probably a true story of a fellow up in Georgia. He came forward and was kneeling at the altar and was praying. And he was praying kind of loud enough for everybody to hear him. And he was praying and he said, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, take away this burden that I'm bearing. Lord, take away this burden I'm bearing. Lord, please take away this burden. And and the, the wise pastor 
came down from the pulpit and put his arms around him and said, now, brother, let's pray. And he said, now, Lord, don't pay any attention to him. He doesn't know what he's praying. Lord, don't take away that burden. Give him strength to bear it like you promised. You see, that's the way God works. And he'll do that in your life. Whatever the problem is, whatever the difficulty, whether it's mental, emotional, spiritual, or physical, God cares about it. Our God cares for you. And he said, cast all your cares on him. And God is sufficient. Do you know that he's never been defeated? He's never, ever been wrong about anything. God is right. God is holy. God is pure. It's impossible for him to fail. And God has said, I'll give you strength to bear whatever comes your way. Boy, I'm so glad of that, aren't you? I mean, whatever comes, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. Because our God has promised that he would be with us in the midst of the storm. I remember reading in the Old Testament about three brave men who said we're going to stand for God. And when the king put up a golden uh, image 90 feet high in the air and he commanded everybody to bow down to that image. And if they didn't, he was going to throw them in a burning, fiery furnace. Those three loved God and said, we're not going to bow. We're not going to bow down to any image. And uh, so they didn't. And the word was given to the king, and he called them in. And the king said, listen, guys, I don't want to put you in that furnace. I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll start all over, and we'll give you another chance. We'll give you another chance. And if you'll, next time you hear all the instruments playing, if you'll bow down, everything will be fine. And those three brave uh, soldiers of God said, we're not going to bow down, king. We don't care. Our God's able to deliver us. And he will deliver us, but if he doesn't, even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow down to your golden image. The, the songwriter sang, you know, that they wouldn't bend. They held on to the will of God, so we are told. They wouldn't bow. They would not bow their knees to the idol made of gold. They wouldn't burn. They were protected by the Fourth man in the fire, they wouldn't bend, they wouldn't bow, they wouldn't burn. You know that story. They were thrown into that burning fire furnace, no strong soldiers. When they opened the door and threw them in, it was so hot that it burned those men to death. They had them all bound up, and the king looked down from his high place, and he could see into that burning furnace, and he called his people and said, Hey! Didn't we throw three people bound in that furnace? They said, yes, O king. He said, but I see four men walking around, unbound and unhurt. And the fourth one looks like the son of God. Now, I don't know whether he understood who God's son was or not, but it was God's son in, that, in the midst of the fire furnace, whether he recognized it or not. Understand, God could have kept them out of the furnace but he got more glory by keeping them in the furnace. The same story is given about uh, Daniel when he uh, was going to pray. No matter what, they said, you can't pray. He said, I'm going to pray anyway. You can't pray. I'll pray. And they watched him, and they found him praying. And so they threw him into the den of lions, the hungry lions. Immediately, those lions would have, no, what happened? Somehow God closed the mouth of those lions you know, God could have kept them from the lion's den, but he kept them in the lion's den. And I really think probably uh, he pulled a couple of lions together, one on each side, and got one for a pillow and slept there all night, and everything was fine because God took care of him according to his promise. I mean, we've just heard the choir sing a moment ago about the uh, disciples being out in the boat and that thing is uh, in a terrible storm and it's up and down and water's filling the boat and they cry, Lord, carry us down off that we perish. Oh. And no water can swallow the boat where lies the master of ocean and earth and skies. They were safe even in the midst of the storm. 
And that's the way it is in your life. The Lord gives these examples simply to teach us that no matter what happens, God may keep you out of it, but he's better and he gets more glory if he keeps you in it and protects you. And he's going to take care of you no matter what. And I read about them. Oh, the people here love God. Refused uh, to stop praying. They kept praying. Even though they stopped praying about having a baby, they kept praying. Even when they didn't get the answer they were looking for, that didn't uh, keep them from continuing instant in prayer. And he is pictured by bringing the incense. They go into the altar and on one side the showbread and the other side the candlestick putting light on the showbread. The Spirit gives light to the Word and, and then there's the altar of incense and that pictures prayer. And according to, Rome, uh, to Revelation what 5, 8 where he said the incense that went up is the heavenward ascent of the prayers of God's people. He's just like incense, and God smells it and loves it. And he said he was offering the incense, picturing a prayer. He just kept on, these people just kept on praying. They didn't get what they wanted, but they just kept on serving. When you don't get your prayer answered, don't stop praying. Don't ever stop praying. Pray without ceasing. And what that means is you pray until you get an answer or God changes your mind. You keep praying about it until you get what you're praying for, or God changes your mind and shows you the alternative. Pray without ceasing is not 24 hours of, of prayer. It's meaning pray until you get an answer. Just keep on praying till light breaks through. The Lord will answer, will answer you. God keeps his promise. His word is true. Just keep on praying till light breaks through. The songwriter had it right. That's what we need to do. Just pray until you get an answer at, or and the Lord changes your mind. And don't ever be discouraged by delayed answers. Just keep on praying. And so they were doing just exactly that. And here they are in upper years, long past the age of childbearing, and the angel comes and says, you know what? You're going to have a baby. Zachariah says, what? We kept praying about that 20 years ago. <laughs> what? Yeah, we're going to have a baby. And so the angel said, you know what? Because you didn't believe, I'm going to make you dumb. You're not going to be able to speak until that baby comes. And so he makes him dumb, not able to speak. He comes out of that time of prayer in the temple, and the people say, you've been here a long time. Tell us what happened. He can't tell them. And so he makes motions to them and shows them. He said, I saw a vision and all that. And he tried to make it known. And he goes home. And his wife said, how was it, honey? How? Some of you wives would be happy if that happened to your husband. Come on. But he couldn't speak. And then he told her, probably wrote it on a tablet because later, when they named the child, he wrote it on the tablet. And he probably told her what happened. And she said, oh, good, we're going to have a baby. Past years, but it's all right. When God says it, it's so. Amen. And so uh, not long from there, about nine months from there, they had a baby. And the baby comes, and they're going to name him, and all the people gather around and say, we're going to name him Zacharias <laughs> after his daddy. His daddy said, no, you're not. <laughs> the angel said, his name is John. And so he said, well, you don't have any relative that name. It's old. It doesn't matter. The angel said it. That settles it. And they wrote it out. And as soon as he wrote it out, he got his voice back, and he started praising God and said, well, God has heard our prayer. Now, what? Heard our prayer about having a baby? We quit praying about that long ago. But God still had it in his book. What I'm saying to you, you don't quit praying for something. And uh, just because God delays the answer doesn't mean it's, to it's a total no. God might give you that thing sometime later. Amen. Some of us can give testimony. 
I was saved uh, in April of 1953, before some of you discovered America. And, uh, I, and I was in a revival meeting, and I began to pray for my daddy. And I prayed for my dad, and my dad wouldn't even listen. And 23 years later, in 1976, Dad received Christ as his Savior was saved. Oh, just keep on praying. Just keep praying. You've got somebody you want to get saved. You want somebody to get right with God. You want somebody to get their lives dedicated to Christ. You want things to happen, and if they're the right kind of things, you just keep praying until you get an answer. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. You seek God and search for him, and you'll find him when you search for him with all your heart. Now listen to what he said. He said, after the prayer was answered, they were filled with joy and gladness. Oh, the blessing of answered prayer. God wants to fill you with joy and gladness. He wants to answer your prayer, and he will if you just keep on praying. Just keep on praying. Don't ever give up. Do what God would have you to do. Let's bow for prayer.